Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this planning committee meeting on the 7th of October 2021. Nice to be back to normal, I think. I think. Right, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Council Caleb Tomlinson, I chair the committee. My vice chair is Mal Donoghue. Um, the meeting is being recorded and the stream will be live on YouTube. The web address for this is displayed on the agenda for the meeting. Um, if you're attending the meeting, because you're a member of the public who has registered to speak, please note you have a time limit of four minutes. You will be timed and I will confirm when your time is up, at which point you must wind up. Um, when I invite you, if you'd like to come to this desk here and press the speak button and make your presentation. Uh, voting will be undertaken by roll call and I will read out your names alphabetically to vote on each item. The outcome of the vote will be confirmed by our legal officer, Geordie, once complete. Um, I'll begin with some housekeeping. If you've got mobile phones, could you uh, put them on to mute, please? OK, if it, the toilets are in the foyer if you need them. And we're not anticipating a fire drill, but if we do, if the alarm does go off, there will be a fire somewhere, so the fire exits are behind you. And, oh. They're actually at the front of the building, aren't they? So, yeah, they're, they're behind you. They're the closest ones. We'll just gather on the car park if it does go off. OK, so I've introduced myself. If we can start clockwise with Jodie. Good evening, uh, Jodie Ingram, solicitor. Good evening, I'm Councillor Melbourne, who and I represent the Seven Stars Ward. Good evening, Charlotte Lynch, Democratic Services Officer. Good evening, Caroline Moon. I represent the ward of Buckshaw and Worden. Good evening, Council Colin Sharples. I represent Earnshaw Bridge. Good evening, Gareth Watson. I represent Cap Green and Gregson Lane. Chris Lomax, Walley Dale East. Councillor Phil Smith, representing New Longton and Hutton East. Good evening, Councillor Harry Hancock, representing Broadout Ward, Pendleton. Good evening, Councillor Barry Yates, representing. Uh, Hi, Walton, Salisbury and Walton Dale. Good evening, Council Mary Green, Council for Mossad and Mitchell. Good evening, Council Adams, representing Middleworth and Pemberton. Good evening, Council Peter Molyneux, representing Salisbury and uh, Walton Ward. James Flannery, representing Middleworth and Pemberton. Catherine Lewis, one of the planning officers. Linda Ashcroft, Planning Officer. Good evening, Chris Sowerby, Planning Officer. Good evening, Stephen Brown, Head of Development Management. All right, thanks everyone for that. Uh, I've got an apology of absence from Councillor John Hesketh and his substitute is Councillor Peter Mullineau. Welcome to the committee for the first time. OK, do we have any declarations of interest on tonight's meeting? Councillor Yates. On item number six, uh, we didn't make a decision because it was a, a split decision, but everybody spoke on it. Have we predetermined that or are we allowed to, to carry on as a committee with this? And could you could you minute it please? The the question's been asked and the answer. Thank you. Um, as you are aware, you may have a predisposition to an application. Um, in terms of a predetermination, that is a matter for each councillor to decide themselves. If they feel that their mind is closed on this um, and that their mind could not possibly be swayed, then they may well have a predetermination of the application, in which case I would advise, advise that they leave the room during um, the application being discussed. I think because you've had a view last time, it would po possibly be a predisposition. Um, I don't think just because you voted on it last time, it would be predetermination. But as I said, that is ultimately a matter for yourselves. All right, thanks for your advice, Jordi. Um, are you happy with that, Councillor Yates? Just come back. Um, I don't want to make an issue with this whatsoever, but. Um, with what's, what's been going on in the past, I just want to make sure that 
would it not have been better if we would have had substitutes doing this item as we've all looked at it we've all spoke hard on it we all predetermined well we all made a decision now if you're saying as a as legal that i'm okay for staying then i'll check i'll check that I'll take that from you and um, go along with, with the officer's uh, recommendation. Uh, it's not a matter of me saying it's okay for you to stay or not. It's a matter for yourselves as to whether your mind is open to listen to the representation and have the debate. So it is a matter for yourselves. If you do feel predetermined, um, again, I would advise that you don't take part in the discussion. Councillor Smith. Thank you. Yeah, just to be clear, Chair, as far as I can see, it's a, it's a different application. It's slightly different than the previous one. And I voted last time and I shall be voting again, but I'll wait till I've heard what he said in the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for the advice. Uh, in that case, I'll, I'll uh, declare a non-pecuniary interest uh, because my mind is open. There's different things on the agenda, so I'll leave it at that. But can you minute it that I've declared it an asset? Please. Thank you. Your microphone's not on, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, I have read and agree with the minutes held on the 9th of September. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Smith. Yeah, I'm happy to second those, Chair. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the vote then. Um, I'll start. Councillor Moon? Four. Councillor Sharples? Four, Chair. Councillor Watson? Four. Councillor Lomax? Four. Councillor Smith? Four. Councillor Hancock? Four, Chair. Councillor Yates? Four. Councillor Mrs. Mary Green? Four, Chair. Councillor Will Adams? I'll abstain, I wasn't here, Chair. I do apologise, you were otherwise engaged working hard for the NHS, sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Mullineau, you'll have to abstain. And Councillor Flannery. Four. Okay, I'll go ahead and sign the minutes. Um, mm, uh, right, Stephen, appeal decisions, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. We have one appeal decision to report tonight. It relates to land adjacent to the Oaks Potters Lane, Salmsbury, which if you remember, this committee refused in November 2020 and is only now just being heard at appeal. Uh, the proposal was for a six bed family eco home with associated landscaping and sub level parking into open land associated with the Oaks that has a lawful development certificate as a garden. The inspector concluded there were two main issues, whether it would be inappropriate development and the effect of the proposal on the openness of Greenbelt and the purposes of including land within it. He concluded it fell within the cluster of development associated with the church and as it was only for one dwelling, then it was limited infill. He felt the plot sizes and scale of development was varied in the locality. So he considered that it was appropriate development within the green belt and granted planning permission. Uh, just as a general view from myself, we're now seeing very liberal interpretations from inspectors as to what is a village and what is an infill plot and this is now based on a few appeal decisions in different locations around the borough. Thank you, Chair. OK, uh, thanks, Stephen. Um, OK, let's move on to agenda item number six, Clifton House, the Vineyard, Walton Dale. Uh, Linda, if you'd like to present this item, please. Catherine, Catherine Lewis is presenting it, Chair. I'm sorry, it must be a typo. Catherine, if you'd like to present the item. Thank you, Chair. The application uh, was presented to the Planning Committee on July 2021, but was not formally determined. A further response has now been received from the Environment Agency, um, which we didn't have at the time, and now it's been brought back to committee to be determined. So the first slide demonstrates the proposals mapping the South Ribble local plan. And um, the site is off the A A6 off Chorley Road in Waltonley Dale. It's part of a small gated community um, uh, with a track that leads down from the housing estate to the bottom of the valley. 
The application site is subject to a number of environmental designations. It's policy G1, green belt, green seven, infrastructure, G16, uh, biodiversity and ecology, um, with a biological heritage site. There's also a tree preservation order across the site and it's part of an ancient woodland. The site is also within zone two and three um, from the flooding maps. The next slide shows the proposed site plan and what we can see is the existing previously approved dwelling and then the proposed bungalow in this location um, with a garage and the access through the gated community down the hillside to the bottom of the valley. In 1970, permission was granted for the new dwell for a dwelling uh, demonstrated in this location. And usually, if permission has not been implemented after five years, then the permission will be deemed lapsed. In 2012, a lawful development certificate was granted, which confirmed that a start and site had previously been made. The certificate was supported by evidence, which legal services considered and confirmed that a start in planning terms have been made. Such a decision cannot legally be now revisited. This application seeks to surrender the current permission and provide for a smaller property in the revised location. The current application seeks to relocate, relocate the dwelling some 21 metres further west from the 1970s permission and set some 37 metres away from the River Darwin rather than it being in this close in this closer location. The next slide just demonstrates some elevations of what it would look like and we also have some photo montages. So basically it's single story, a lot smaller than previously approved and this slide uh, at the bottom of it, you can see that it will be slightly raised up due to the land formation and also contour to ensure that it sits uh, within the site being mindful of any flooding issues. The next slide just demonstrate the site. So we've got the existing access to the site adjacent to number five, the vineyard. And as you can see, it goes down the hillside to the bottom where we've got the current approved scheme over here. And this is the application site. And that's a view looking from the bottom of the valley towards the River Darwin which is located uh, just beyond this tree line here. The next slides are just visual approaches of what the bungalow, the proposed bungalow would look like within the site. Um, it will be about nine metres by 17 metres with a mono pitch roof um, and constructed using modern materials with a modern type finish. And because of it sitting low within the site like this, uh, subject to landscaping, it would sit within the site. There again, you can see it with the raised contouring um, and then the trees. And there's another look, uh, picture of the visual looking at the, the rear of it with the canopy over that part of the house. And that slide just demonstrates the extent of the flooding within the site. So the main issues, the principle of a dwelling has been established on the site. And in terms of the details, the applicants have submitted further information to the Environment Agency, which addresses their previous concerns. It now provides for a compensatory flood storage area. There are many environmental designations, but there are no formal objections from any of the statutory consultees. Most consultees recognise that this is an exceptional situation <coughs> and acknowledge that it's unique. And on that basis, it will be very difficult for any of the statutory consultees to sustain an objection. So to conclude, the application proposes to give up the existing permission in, in, in line with then a smaller proposed bungalow. We have the opportunity or the councillors have the opportunity to impose uh, a lot of conditions to control the development which will include a reduced residential curtilage so that it's not as, as wide as it was under the current uh, application and therefore there's more control of what that would look like with all the paraphernalia associated with gardens that we get. Um, the, we can take the uh, permitted development rights away so we can control any future extensions 
there are a number of landscape conditions, ecological conditions and drainage conditions. And if this application isn't approved, the fallback position is to construct a larger dwelling with very little control over the proposal in what is a sensitive area. The applicant um, has submitted a non-material amendment to the current approved scheme as a way of demonstrating that if this one is not approved, then the intention is that the current approved scheme would um, be further implemented. So officers are recommending approval on balance, subject to the conditions and the signing of a legal agreement to ensure that only one property is formally constructed. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Thanks for your presentation, Catherine. Very in-depth. OK, well, I have um, five registered objectors wishing to speak against this application. I have got the supporter of the application and I've also got the representative of the applicant. So, first of all, do we have a Mr Wong? I'm not dialing in. Do we have a Mr. Seddon? Do we have Mr. Boyle? Do we have a Mr. Simon Keeley? Do we have a Mr. Dunlop? This is a good show. Do we have um, a Tracy Thomas? Um, would you like to come to the table and? Um, so if you'd like to, if you press the button that says speak, your microphone will come on. And you've got four minutes. OK, thank you. Good evening, Chair members. I'm here this evening to speak to you on behalf of myself and my partner, the applicant, who has made this application, which is before you. I was born in Wantleydale and have spent all my life living in the South Ribble area. I understand only too well the changing landscape that has occurred over the years. I had my 18th birthday celebrations at the then Vineyard restaurant, which is now the residential estate we are talking about. I'm not here to speak about matters of policy, be that national or local, or indeed what planning balance should be applied other than to say that Gareth from Emory Planning is here to pick up on these points. I am aware from the last meeting that a number of points were raised and I wanted the opportunity to address these. The management company's representative had stated that he represents all the residents of the estate and is expressing their opinions. I agree that they represent 10 households, but would disagree that they are presenting a true reflection of what residents think of this application. We have been residents of the vineyard for the last three years, having rented number two. And on talking to a number of our neighbours, the company's representative is seeking to report a minority narrative to suit. The representative has reported that there are 12 children on the estate. We are well aware of the health and safety of all children, with one of those children being our own nine-year-old daughter. So having discussed our proposal with a number of other parents, none have expressed any concern. It was raised that the application was granted some 50 years ago, and even allowing for the issue of the lawful development certificate, which confirmed that the original planning permission was live, was then issued in November 2012, the year our daughter was born. However, it was not until 2018 we finally sold our house, giving us sufficient funds needed to start the build, whilst continuing to maintain the woodland. Overall, what I would like to say to members is the development would not be a monstrosity, but our family home. Both my partner and I are committed to creating a family home, 
while continuing to maintain the open access, which is pre presently enjoyed by many. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Tracy. Do we have um, the ward councillor with us this evening? No. Nope. Ward councillor not wishing to speak. Okay, do we have a Gareth Salthouse? Okay, once again, if you'd like to press the, re the speak button, the microphone will come on and just make your representation. Four minutes, okay? Thank you, Chair. My colleague at Emory Planning, Ben Pycroft, spoke to members at the last planning committee in July of this year. Since that time, the Environment Agency has confirmed that they have no objections to the proposed development. Members will recall at the time of the last meeting, the Environment Agency had issued a holding objection. All of your statutory and non-statutory consultees now advise that they do not wish to raise any objections. When your officers have assessed the application in detail and again recommend planning permission should be granted. There was some discussion at the last planning committee about the validity of the planning permission granted in the 1970s. This issue has already been dealt with by the council and assessed in detail by the council's legal section. The council issued a positive certificate of lawfulness confirming that the approval had been implemented and remains live. As your officers have advised, there is no doubt that the applicant can continue construction works and complete the approved house. Regardless of the outcome of this evening's debate, a house will be built at the application site. The key consideration is whether the proposed scheme now before you results in a better or worse outcome in overall planning terms. As for the committee report, the scheme undoubtedly results in a betterment. The proposed house is roughly 50% smaller in size be located over 25 metres further away from the River Darwin, has a garden curtilage area of approximately two acres in size, whereas the approved has a garden curtilage area roughly 14 acres in size. This is obviously a very substantial reduction. The committee report before you includes 26 planning conditions covering a wide range of environmental matters. For instance, condition five would result in the withdrawal of permitted development rights so that the applicant is no, not able to build, make the building bigger or erect new outbuildings in the future. 11, 12, 13 and 14 place controls over the way in which construction work is carried out. And this includes hours of operation and wheel washing facilities. 24 restricts the garden curtilage area to a tightly defined space around the new house. There are also several conditions relating to beneficial landscape and ecology works. There's no mechanism to exercise any such control over the extant approved scheme. And if planning permission was refused this evening, then construction works could continue immediately. In this scenario, the council could exercise very little control over the way in which construction work is carried out and permitted development rights would remain intact. The proposed development results in net benefits in terms of the openness of the green belt, biodiversity, flood risk and the integrity of the woodland. It also presents the council with the opportunity to exercise control over the way in which construction work is carried out and removes future permitted development rights. It is a far superior scheme compared with the extant approval. This is a very unusual situation. Not something I've ever come across, and I doubt that your officers have ever come across a similar situation, or indeed you as members have ever come across a similar set of circumstances. It's very much an exceptional case, and a set of circumstances unlikely to be replicated ever again across the borough. Ultimately, the refusal of planning permission this evening would be to invite a scheme that does the least to address the very concerns raised by some of those who have objected to the proposed development, rather than securing a betterment. I therefore ask that you endorse your officer's recommendation and resolve to grant planning permission this evening. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks for your representations, Mr Soltavs. OK, um, I'm going to bring this into committee now and Jane, Councillor Flannery. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, it, I agree with the last comments. It is an unusual set of circumstances, but albeit that it is, um, we take it on its merits and, on, uh, and the very fact that tonight um, what we've got in front of us is a situation where as we have control over something or no control over the other, that was the, the, the discussion we've had before. 
but it looks like a good design and no one's saying up to object. And when then you hear Tracy and a family come here tonight and gives a heartwarming background into why they want to develop, why they want a family home there, it means a lot because that's what we're all here for, to get the balance of the people plus the legislation and the policy. So on the balance of what I've seen in here, Chair, I'm going to move approval. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor Flannery. Yeah, I'm, I'm perplexed as why people would register to speak in objection and then not bother to turn up. Councillor Lomax. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, as you know, or might not know, uh, I am Councillor for uh, Waltonley Dale East. Uh, I did vote against this last time. Uh, I found it very emotive. Uh, being brought up uh, in the area and playing on the area. I've now gone through this report twice and it is excellent um, with it. And I thank Catherine for that. There is the live plan there. But what I've looked at is what is best for the area. And it is my considered opinion that what is best for the area is this plan uh, with it. So I'm actually quite happy uh, to second James's proposal. Uh, I think it is the best way forward. And talking to people within the living air, within the area, it is in with li living history that two ladies actually lived down there in what was, or can be said as a bungalow, if you know what a bungalow is in the state of the seasides, etc. They used to keep hens and they used to sell eggs in the local area. So, you know, it is in living memory. I will be voting uh, for this. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Lomax. Well, 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 we are in committee. It's Councillor Flannery. Uh, Councillor Yates. Well, sir, yeah. Um, I've looked at it again and gone right through it and I can't help but keep looking at our local plan and what's been drummed into me in training and everything else. Yes, it's got a, a planning permission for, a, for an house to be built. Um, yes, that, that can get built tomorrow if they still want to start work tomorrow. But according to my policies, we shouldn't be even looking at this because it's in the green belt, it's in ancient woodland, it's in um, green wedges, corridors, it's everything that's going along. And then even in the local plan, we say that new development shouldn't be built in, in the green belt. And really, if you look at it, and I hope somebody's going to con uh, contradict me on this to, because it might help. But when you look at it, it is a new development because under our conditions, uh, 723 at the bottom, it says that uh, it can, we can look at a, at a site and, and, uh, and put another development on it, but only in the footprint of that, that development. This is 25 yards away. It's, it's not the same development whatsoever. It's a separate development. It's new building the green belt. So people will really have to um, encourage me to go against South Ribble policies, South Ribble's local plan and everything that's, that's been put, in, put into us in training for the last 28, 29 years that I've been on planning. So if you can explain it, to say that this, we should allow this to go forward, then I'd be, I'd be more than welcome. But in my mind, just at the moment, I'm looking down the air and I can't see anything whatsoever in the local plan, the policies, core strategy of South Ribble or anything that allows it to go forward. And I'll leave it there for now to you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Yates, thanks for that. Catherine, would you like to come back on any of Councillor Yates's points? Yes, th thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Yates, for the comments that you've made. Uh, and, and you're quite right, the starting point for any decision making is the development plan. And the development plan and the proposals map demonstrate that that site is within the green belt, together with those uh, environmental designations. What you're also allowed to do is take into account material considerations, any other 
material considerations. And then the weight that you attach to those material considerations provides for that balancing act in terms of making your judgment about, about the application. And officers in going through that process uh, quite rightly agree with you, it is in the green belt, there are strict policies about development. However, this is a unique situation where one of those dwellings, the one that's currently got that um, certificate of lawful um, use but for what's happened there, that would be uh, given over and so it's one for one. It's not more than one, it's a trade-off and that is the weight that as officers we've attached to the application. Does that help you? I understand all that uh, material consideration exactly because when you read it down um, in uh, seven all the way down get to the bottom of it it does material consideration is needed but it's material consideration on the site of the building that was proposed to be erected not on another site it has to be in the same footing the same well maybe not the same footing but on the same piece of land that the housing that the house was passed for this is 25 yards away and all we're doing really is kicking the problem along i know what uh, well, councillor Flan flannery has said and i can see where he's coming from but do we in 2021 want to turn around and say that we're going to throw all the policies up in the air and catch all each bits that come down no i i don't if it was any, if it will we was on the same piece of land and they were putting the same house on this same piece of land i'd be putting my hand up for it now because it's it's in material situation but as far as i can see we've had a shift from where it was going to be developed it's a new piece um so i'm not convinced at the moment Okay, I'll just bring Stephen Brown in and then it's Councillor Adams followed by Councillor Mrs Mary Green. Yeah, ju just in terms of adding to what Catherine said, what you have to weigh in your minds is why it has been moved from that position to the new position and it has been moved for legitimate reasons and that being the flood risk issues that have been identified. So yes, it's different, but it's, been, it's in a different position for uh, very plausible reasons. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Councillor Will Adams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think this is a, an exceptional case, has already been mentioned, uh, with special material considerations, some of which you probably won't see again. Um, I think that requires us to be um, to show a level of pragmatism uh, in this and uh, to, to try and find an outcome for, for all concerned here. Um, Thank you for, to Tracy for coming to speak. Um, you know, it was great great to hear you in terms of how passionate you are clearly about the site. Um, you know, that being said, I do think this is a, diff a different application from last time. Um, you know, last time uh, the Environment Agency had a holding on it, whereas now they've um, have stated they've got no objections, which I think is, is quite significant, um, to be honest, particularly where the site is. So on the balance of that, and I think with with all things considered, and it being a difficult application, I think for me the biggest thing here is about having uh, greater protections for the environment um, and for that area. Um, so for me, I would support approval um, on that basis um, and would support the conditions also. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Mrs Mary Green. Thank you, Chair. Um, Unfortunately, I, I, I tend to agree with Councillor Yates. Um, I can see where the officers are coming from, but it just worries me that we seem on every application that a green belt is involved in, we seem to have seem to be having a softening of the rules of the local plan, of the MPPF, everything is tending to be softened on every application and we're allowing more and more and more development in Greenbelt 
and we get into a situation where someone's going to say, well, you allowed it then, why are you not allowing it now? And that's why I think we need to stick with our rules and regulations with the local plan. It's clearly inappropriate building in a green belt and contrary to the MPPF. Even the appearance of it, it's been stated that it, you know, it fits in nice with the rural area with the trees around it. I don't think it fits in right. Uh, nice. It's got white rendering on it. It's got a grey roof. It stand, to me, it stands a black PVC windows. There's nothing to soften it into the background and into the amenity of it. So, if I don't know if Council Yates is going forward for refusal, but if he is, I'd like to second that for refusal. Um, it didn't make a proposal, but you can make a proposal, Council Mrs Green. Um, I'll propose refusal then on the grounds of um, inappropriate building in a green belt and contrary to MPPF rules. Okay, I presume Councillor Yates, you'll be seconding that proposal. Is there anyone else on committee wishing to speak? Because I've had a proposal and I've had a, an amendment. Councillor Smith. Just uh, a point of clarification, Chair, with regard to the Environment Agency. Um, a revised uh, flood risk assessment has been received together with additional information and the Environment Agency are satisfied with the revised information subject to appropriate conditions. Can, can we outline what those appropriate conditions are? Because although I've read the conditions, there might be something in there somewhere that I've missed. I, I actually can't see any appropriate conditions as such. Catherine, could you enlighten Councillor Smith? Condition 26 talks about the compensatory storage scheme shall be implemented prior to commencement of the works and then it quotes the uh, documentation that the applicant has submitted and that the environment agency has considered and agreed to. And then the condition about the plan numbers includes that documentation as well. Yeah, that's the only, the only one that I found. I just couldn't find anything online on the reports, uh, as in a full report from the environment agency. Um, but uh, maybe this wasn't working this afternoon and I couldn't access it properly. But uh, I understand that that may be an environment agency one, um, but um, so do we know what they've actually got to do to comply with it then? Or do we need the <coughs> environment agency to tell us? I have a copy of the environment agency's comments. Would, would it help if I read some of that out to you? If, if you watch, sorry, I couldn't hear that. But. I have a copy of the environment agency's yeah. comments. Would that help if I read that out to you? Yes, it would, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Too. Uh, the submitted information demonstrates that in order to achieve a suitable finished floor level, ground levels will be raised uh, as per the proposed elevations, which is quoted in the um, conditions for the plans. In order to mitigate against any increased flood risk elsewhere, compensatory storage has been provided and they find that that scheme is now acceptable. It says the storage must be implemented prior to any ground raising on site and the development built in accordance with both the flood risk assessment and that information that's listed above. Uh, Councillor Moon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask a question of the officers, really. Um, I've started from a place of inappropriate development by definition, harmful to the green belt, should not be approved except in very special circumstances. So I've gone through all of this like everybody else has. And then when I look at very special circumstances and have to give substantial weight to those circumstances, I'm then told about this fallback position. And there seems to be, in my mind, a lot of weight being given. And it actually says in the report, there is a fallback position with a definite prospect of the dwelling being completed if planning permission is rejected. And as such, there is no scenario where Holland Wood remains absent of a new dwelling. And therefore, because of that, it's considered the proposal constitutes very special circumstances. Yet we're being advised 
that there is a very legitimate reason for moving this dwelling, which I think we all knew last time. And sitting here right now, we all know now. And I think if you ignore that personally, I, I, I just think you're glossing over the fact that we're moving this from 11 metres from a river to 37 metres, is it, from a river? So we've been told that moving this because of flooding is a legitimate reason. Well, for me, then, that surely negates that fallback position. And to keep suggesting that there's no scenario where this is going to be not be built and that there is a very definite prospect of a dwelling, I just don't see how we can have we can have those two things. I think if I was looking at this on the same footprint as that original permission, then I'd be arguably voting for it because they're coming and saying, we want to reduce it, we want to do this, we want to do that. I wouldn't be happy, I wouldn't be happy, but I'd accept that those very special circumstances of a definite dwelling are going to be met because they're saying we can live in that location. We just want to live in that location in a smaller dwelling. I don't accept that that's true, really. I don't accept that fact because if we could live in that location, then why are we moving it because of the flooding? It, the two things for me are not sitting well. And I, from that perspective, I said it at the last meeting, I've looked at this, I've gone through it. I just can't accept. I just, I just don't accept that this is a very special circumstances where we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. I don't accept that because the dwelling 11 metres away from the river is arguably not tenable. That's why we're moving it. OK, thanks, Councillor Moon. I think you'll find that the representative of the applicant actually said they will build whatever goes on. So, Councillor Watson, did you want to come in? Catherine? Sorry, yes, uh, yes, Chair. Um, what, what I think what I heard you say, Councillor, is you don't accept that 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 um, that they can't. Why can't they build on that existing footprint, and that will be your preferred option? Well, as in in terms of the current situation with regard to the bean and approved scheme already, that current scheme that's got the approval at the moment with regard to the flooding has been built at that time as well when it was it was approved there is an underground basement as well and it's a lot bigger so that underground basement where the garages are is a way of enabling that flooding if that current scheme goes ahead i think that will be a much more engineered solution and probably damage the environment in a way that the current scheme that you've been asked to approve wouldn't and, and, and I think for me, that that's that trade off really. Yes, you're right. They could build a smaller bungalow on the existing footprint, but it's still going to be a very, very engineered solution and probably worse to the environment than this current scheme. I think that's as officers how, how we view it. OK, thanks, Catherine. Did you want to come in, Council Watson, or not? Thank you, Chair. Um, I have to agree with what Caroline said, to be honest with you. Hey, sorry, Councillor Moon said. Um, in addition, obviously, we've had quite a lot of representations. I appreciate no one's turned up tonight um, uh, to speak against it, but obviously we have had those representations and the residents last time spoke against this very strongly. Uh, we've had others come in in between times. Um, <sighs> I, ju I struggle to see how we justify building uh, on this site and I, I struggle to see it's like the, the, I appreciate they've said that they're going to build on the other side regardless uh, and that may be the case but um, certainly last time when I asked the residents if uh, it's almost a calling the bluff situation um, they said uh, yeah we, 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 they'd, they'd rather take that chance so um, I mean, I'm, to be honest, I'm happy to second refusal, unless Councillor Yates wishes to do so. OK, thanks, Councillor Watson. Councillor Flannery, did you want to come back? Uh, yeah, just a little one of you don't mind. I'm sorry, I don't normally come back in a second time. Um, the officer's done a report which says it's policy compliant. 
There seems to be a sensible reason why the applicant wants to do what they want to do. The applicant is also wanting to comply with the conditions and controls of which we want to implement on them rather than the alternative. And I don't think we should be uh, questioning the integrity of the applicant. Uh, the applicant turned up, the local family, they want to build a house for the family themselves. They've got children there, they don't want to disrupt anything, they just want to do what they can do with a sensible solution. We have our policy, which we all abide by and we all interpret, and as Barry said, we all get the training on. But, but there's people against policy every time we, we have this, this issue. Um, it's quite clear the alternative is not a good alternative. What they're proposing is to comply with conditions, work with us to build a dwelling. It, for me, it doesn't make any sense why we should be querying that. So thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Councillor Flannery. Um, I'm going to allow Councillor Yates to come in once more and then I'm closing the debate and, because I've had a proposal and a seconder for approval, a proposal and a seconder for refusal. We'll be taking the, amend the vote on the amendment first, which is for refusal. Councillor Yates. Right, thank you. I can understand the applicant and the family wanting to, to live down there. I think it's a marvellous place if you, if you could have an house down there. But we've got to remember that South River was uh, formed in 1973-74. This was passed by Preston. In them days, you could chew asbestos, you could sew it up, do whatever you want with it. Today, it's been proved that it gives you cancer. This is what we're doing. If we, if we allow this to go through, we're putting a cancer into our South Ribble planning rules and policies because what we're going to do, we're going to burn it away from the inside. Everything that we've been taught as a planning committee from the South Ribble Council tells us that this cannot be voted through. If we vote it through, then fair enough. It's a flood zone three. We do say in our local plan that we will not build in flood zones. We're going to build in a flood zone three. If they want to put the house on where it, where it is already and put a smaller house on, so be it. You know, we, can, we haven't given that permission as a council. But we are, which we try to say, and it's over top of the mayor's head, every full council meeting that we are a curring council. We are a curring council. We keep to our policies as well. But what we're doing here, we're setting a fire inside with policies that will burn it out. And if this goes through, we broke every, every policy in the book. And I'll leave it at there. Right, thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor Yates. Uh, Catherine, just before we do go to the amended vote for refusal, when was this certificate granted? And was it granted by South Ribble Borough Council? Yeah, I, I think it says in the report that the certificate was granted in 2012 and it was granted by South Ribble Borough Council. OK, Catherine, thanks for that. OK, I am going to go to the amended vote for refusal. I will call you out alphabetically. Um, just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, Councillor Mrs Mary Green. OK, and I'm now being advised by Councillor Yates that Mr Wat Councillor Watson seconded. But when I asked you previously, you said you were willing to second it. Yeah. Right, OK, so let's go to the vote. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Donoghue. Against, Chair. Uh... Councillor Flannery. Against refusal. Councillor Mrs Mary Green. For refusal. Councillor Harry Hancock. Against, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Lomax. Against. Councillor Mullinor. Refusal. Councillor Mrs Councillor Moon. For. Councillor Colin Chipples. Against, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Phil Smith. For refusal. Councillor Gareth Yates. Ca 
Gareth Watson. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> for refusal. <laughs> and uh, Councillor Barry Yates. And I am against refusal. Okay, so if we can go to the original proposal, which was motioned by Councillor Flannery, seconded by Councillor Chris Lomax. Um, so this is for accepting the recommendations. Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Donoghue. Four, Chair. Sure. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mrs Mary Green. Against. Councillor Harry Hancock. Four, Chair. Sure. Councillor Chris Lomax. Four. Councillor Mullineau. Against. Councillor Moon. Against. Councillor Sharples. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. Against. Councillor Gareth Watson. Against, Chair. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Barry Yates. I am for approval. Okay, Jody, if we can have the outcome of that vote, please. And just let it be known that I correctly named Councillor Gareth Watson this time. <laughs> Uh, the motion has been carried to approve the application at Clifton House, the vineyard. It was um, seven, four and six against. And that's approval subject to conditions and a legal agreement. Thank you. OK, thanks for that. If you were here just for that one application, if you'd like to leave, you can do. All right, thanks for your attendance. I'm just surprised there weren't more of you. OK, um, item agenda number seven this evening is the Champagne Indian Restaurant, 97 Port Lane, Penwitham. And uh, Chris Sowerby is going to introduce this item. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry, I'm just trying to get to the start of the slide. There we go. <clears throat> the site is located at the junction between Cop Lane and Pope Lane within the Kingsfold Local Centre. Surrounding land uses are a mixture of commercial and residential. The property, which was historically a pub, but more recently a restaurant, has been vacant since 2019. There is an existing circa 30 space car park on site which is known to be used by customers of other nearby commercial properties. This car park however is not a public car park and is on private land. The existing access from Pope Lane is to be retained as are large sections of the boundary hedging. The site occupies a prominent location at the Pope Lane, Copla, uh, Pop, uh, Pope Lane Cop Lane Junction. An historic closed up access onto Pope Lane is proposed to be opened up as an egress from the service yard. This is the view from within the site of the closed access. The entrance to the service yard is proposed to be from an existing shared access off Woodville Road. This is the view of the existing access arrangement with residential apartments in Woodville Court to the left. And this photo shows the rear section of the site. The proposal comprises of three retail units and a hot food takeaway. Three retail there, no, food takeaway at the bottom. County highways are of the opinion that the provision of 20 car parking spaces, where guidance seeks a maximum of 50 spaces, would not have a severe impact on highway safety given the uh, sustainable location of the site and that site also be near an existing public car park. The proposed building is of single storey in scale and therefore lower than the existing two storey building on the site. Full height glazed feature window and window graphics are proposed on the prominent corner location. And here. An existing boundary hedge is to be supplemented with shrub planting. 
The proposed service access has generated particular opposition from residents who believe that it would not be possible for HGVs to use without issue. A swept path analysis has been provided, which has been reviewed by County Highways, who consider that the access to be confined for the largest delivery vehicles, but achievable. There are no objections to the proposal from County Highways or any of the other statutory consultees. I should point out that County Highways have been consulted multiple times on this application following the submission of amended plans and also details technical objections from the public and have conducted numerous site visits. For these reasons and those contained within the report, the application is recommended for approval subject to the imposition of conditions. So I think, Chair. Okay, Chris, thanks for your uh, representation, your presentation. Um, right, we do have some registered speakers on this application. Do we have a Jane Mills? Okay, as before, if you'd just like to press the red button, introduce yourself and make your presentation. You've got four minutes, okay. Thank you. So my name's Jane and I live directly opposite the rear of the proposed development. Um, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about the position of the site, the area that I live in um, and some of my observations. So Kingsfold is a really bustling community. We've got a number of shops, we've got takeaways, a bakery, a pharmacy, a pub and a supermarket, which is just all just a couple of hundred yards from my front door. So my home's on Woodville Road, which is at the rear, and it's directly across from the proposed point of entry um, of HGV vehicles, and it overlooks the back of the development. So that site is on an incredibly busy junction of two main roads, and the rear of the development is, is a residential street. So you could be forgiven for thinking that the site was really immense, but it isn't. It's, it's not actually that big. I think it's a relatively small site. Um, it's on there currently stands a derelict building, which was a pub back in the day, and um, it does have plenty of car parking spaces to it. Looking at the plans, you can see how crowded the proposed development is, and I'm really, really concerned that car parking facilities are at saturation where I live. The car parks are often full and cars park up and down Woodville Road to use all the facilities that are on the main road. The car park actually that you can see in the plan, um, which I, I believe has been referred to as a public car park, actually is owned by the pub um, across the road and has never been designated for public parking. The cars also park on the main road um, in front of the chip shop and to the, the side of the development on Pope Lane and that causes congestion. There's a, a bus stop there and it, it's incredibly busy and I do worry that there's going to be accidents there. In fact, the exit point that you can see on the plans um, from the development where HGVs would exit has actually had bollards there for the last 20 years and they've been there due to safety concerns because there have been a number of road traffic accidents. I have real concerns that when a HGV is coming out of that exit, the, the view from the right hand side is, is very limited because there's buildings right there and how you would see children crossing the road using that pavement. I have a 14 year old daughter. She walks that way to school as do many, many other children. And I do really worry about their safety. The other point for me is that where I live on Woodville Road, this 15 metre HGVs will be coming directly outside my property and turning into the proposed development. I've got some real concerns about that. It's a 20 mile an hour residential road. That 20 mile an hour limit is there to encourage people to go outside. It's to reduce pollution and to allow a HGV down there doesn't seem to make sense to me. I'm concerned about noise. I'm concerned about vibration. I'm concerned because literally it will be feet outside of my home and right underneath my living room and bedroom window. Um, I'm, I am concerned about the sweep of the of the HGV, but I believe that that's already been covered by highways agency. Um, I can't understand how that HGV is actually going to make it in practicality. That really does worry me quite a lot. Um, the other issue for me really is regarding the proposed takeaway and the noise from that. The champagne 
as it was, former restaurant, had a kitchen at the back. It was a bustling restaurant, but the fans were going constantly. The kitchen doors were open. The guys in the kitchen were chatting and shouting to each other. There were pots and pans being banged about, and that would all go on till midnight, which in the winter isn't too bad, but in the summer with your bedroom window open and you're trying to get some sleep for work, it, it really has quite an impact on your life. I did try and contact the council about that at the time that the champagne was open, but unfortunately I didn't receive a reply. It does worry me that, that, take, that this takeaway, again, is going to be directly across from my bedroom window. Um, I have concerns about that, that the noise might be increased because... Yeah, and you need to start tying up. You've had over four minutes. So oh, you need have to I? Yeah, you I'm need so to start sorry. tying up. I'm so sorry. I just, in closing, thank you very much for listening to me. And I just want to say I'm not, I don't object to development of that site. It's an eyesore. It needs to go. But it's this development, it's overdeveloped in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, do we have a Margaret Moore wanting to speak in objection? She has registered. She couldn't make it. Um, do we have a Jane, to, Jane Clarkson wishing to speak via Teams who, is, who wants to speak in support yes. of the application? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, just just about. Oh, but right. At least, you, at least you are there. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> mm. I'm struggling with that personally. What are you struggling with? Hearing me? Hello? Okay, if you'd like to present, I'm, I'm, I'm actually struggling to hear whether you've got a bad connection or not. I don't know. No, um, shouldn't be. I haven't had problems before. Can you hear me now? No? Yes, yes, yes we, can, we can just about hear you, yes. If, you, if you'd like okay. to make your four-minute uh, right. presentation in support of the application. Okay, thank okay. you. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking on behalf of Woodville Court Flats as the Secretary of the Management Committee, being the Champagne's closest neighbour. We were all invited to meet the developer some time ago to view the plans and discuss the pros and cons. Several points were brought up and eventually ironed out. All the flat owners are eager to see the Champagne go and a small sensitive development in its place. The developer put bollards at one end of the road in between us and the site. We were delighted as this stopped cars coming through dealing drugs outside the flats. I believe there was opposition to this, but it proved a positive move. I know there has been plenty of opposition to the plans and people were saying it was going to be an oldie, which is clearly not an option. They were also talking about drains collapsing when HGVs entered the site. This is not likely as the site previously had HGV deliveries with beer barrels being delivered. There was talk of awful smooth food smells from the takeaway, but looking at the plans, it is no closer than the previous restaurant and the environmental health reports show that it will be better than a late night licensed restaurant. There was a concern of parking, but I witnessed that some of the car parks around here are almost empty most of the time. It is people that choose to park in the wrong place that is a nuisance. When Tesco on Cop Lane submitted their plans, there was a huge uproar, but it went ahead. And now some 10 months on, it seems like it's been there forever. It's been accepted and even the opposers use it. The traffic is less than people imagined and it blends nicely into its surroundings. The very large delivery vans haven't been an issue to most people and there will be far more than there will be at this development. We firmly believe that this will be the case for this site and in three years time it will blend in and become part of the community, a single story innocuous building. We know that during the demolition and the bill there will be complaints and issues, but in our experience they will be addressed with consideration and respect as they have been in the past, as we have always had prompt replies to our questions and potential issues from the developer. They have helped us more as neighbours than the previous occupiers. In our opinion, an occupied site will be secure and cared for, which will benefit all neighbours. Thank you for allowing me to speak and your time. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Jane Clarkson. They still do hear trumpets. 
Right, uh, Councillor Martin, you wish to speak on this application? Yes. Councillor Martin, you go before the applicant, okay? Oh, well. Or the applicant's agent. Hi, oh, good evening, committee. Thank you for your time. Um, I'll have to be brief because we thought we were going to have other speakers. Um, the biggest concerns we have with this building is, is its overdevelop its overbearingness on, on the on the frontage of, of the road and the junction. Um, if you look at the line sight lines of both roads, you will see that most of the buildings are set quite far back, at least the car is at car length part, whereas this thing will be jutted forward into the junction. Um, the, the other issue is, is the way it's, it's going to be presented. Um, it's not going to look very nice. Um, we have a we have a I think a 19th century barn opposite it. We have the chip shop is a is an 18th century or 19th century building. It used to be a cottage, part of the original road, and the pub obviously is 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 a protected pub that's 17th or 18th century, uh, and, and so on. And we've got Kingsfold just down the road, so it's not really in fitting with the, with with the current area. The other issue is the, is the parking. Um, what this developer is expecting is the public purse to pick up his own ability to provide adequate parking. 15 parking spaces, two of which will be electric, one which will be disabled is not adequate enough really because you expect in the other, because it should have been, I think it should have been two disabled parkings, but this means that two people will not be able to access the site if there's someone in that car parking space already and expected to travel 150 metres from and already I, I disagree with the car parks. We have we went there yesterday. All the car parks are filled. Um, I'm disappointed with highways agency, uh, the highways uh, authority because um, they seem to think that there's 20 parking spaces on Pope Lane, which there isn't. There isn't 20 parking spaces on Pope Lane. So I, I don't know where they get that information from. HGVs will have an issue there. As a class one driver myself, I, I wouldn't want to challenge. I wouldn't want to challenge. I wouldn't want to try getting a vehicle I'm driving down there. What also happens is the residents down that small street will probably end up with parking conditions put on there by the authority because if they park legally, that lorry will not get in, which then equates them to being guilty of obstruction and or the trade union act as well if they're stopping someone from doing their work. Um, so it, it's not. I mean. Anyone on, on, on the top of the number three omnibus to press to Penwith will see that there's not enough space. The public purse is being told that they're the ones who have to pick up the we'll have a parking issue. We are not we're not against development. We need that development. The developer should have made that site secure from the off. And he, unfortunately they failed to do that. We asked for Harris fencing, never got put up. There was a fire there. There'd been drug dealing, as we heard. We've had to engage the police to look after the area a bit more. And unfortunately, the developer's not taken any action to try and do that, apart from the bollards, which we mentioned earlier. So it's, it's an inappropriate development. It's overbearing. The material side of it is, is incorrect. It doesn't fit in with the with the street scene. Um, it's a very busy junction, as you've heard from residents. Uh, and I, I know we can't, we probably won't be able to completely reject it, but I would like a deferment to see if we can move on this personally and, and see if there's anything we can do to try and remedy some of these concerns, especially with the parking and highways and possibly if the council's minded to to engage their own parking, their own uh, highways expert to, to qualify that. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Councillor Martin. Um, well, the applicant or his aid, the applicant has registered to speak uh, via Teams. So the applicant is um, Hitesh Chandarana. I'm here, Chair, thank you. We go from one extreme to the other, don't we? I'm here, Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can, yes. We, we, we can hear you, um, Mr Chandarana. Um, if you'd like to make a four minute presentation, um, if you'd like to start now, please, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, councillors. I'm Hitesh Chandarana from the applicant company. I hope you have all received the supporting documents emailed and had an opportunity to review. We purchased the site on 20th of December 2019 and entered the design stage in the new year, guided by the fact that the site was to be retained for commercial use within the Kingsfall Local Centre as defined by policy E5 of the South Ribble Local Plan. 
Survey showed the property was not suitable for conversion to retail use due to ceiling heights, making it uneconomical to refurbish and operate. Wayne Hemingway for the Penleden Master Plan highlighted the outdated architecture and design of some of the existing units in the King's Fold Centre recently. The design brief was therefore to create a modern design of retail unit for this commercial plot. We consulted with our closest neighbours, the owners and residents of the 10 flats at Woodville Court. They acknowledge our plans and raise questions and concerns which are addressed to their approval. Emails were sent to engage with ward councillors as a gateway to consult with the wider neighbourhood from an early stage. Unfortunately, two on the committee couldn't engage and replied. And Councillor Martin unfortunately declined the, the proposition besides a couple of emails which have been disclosed. We did listen to feedback provided by consultees via the planning officer to ensure we designed a suitable scheme to meet approval. This is not a large supermarket or shopping centre development. Our largest unit is only 4,000 square foot of similar size to convenience stores such as the Co-op on Port Lane or the Square on Brownage Road. Whilst the likes of Aldi and Lidl require 20,000 square foot, which is five times the size of this site, it simply provides four additional units all within a similar size range as others in this local centre. The overall floor space was also revised uh, to reduce from 720 square metres to 650 square metres to allow for planting. Parking concerns have been a cause of objection quoting generic parking standards guidance and required a, a more site specific study. Consultants confirmed there to be sufficient car parking capacity and that's without including the, the car park that the objector mentioned and free flowing traffic and was approved by County Highways. You may see cars parked illegally in front of the chip shop regularly whilst there are empty spaces in all surrounding car parks. This small development should not be stopped for the driver behaviour of a minority parking in an illegal manner. Unfortunately, it tends to happen on quick shopping visits when there is no parking to the front and is viewed as being, I'm only going to be there a minute. This is a management issue and needs some signage or enforcement to remedy. Whilst the parking offered is less than the guidance, the users are usually short stay and gone very quickly. Local centres are used by local residents for short frequent visits where people can choose to visit by foot, cycle or car instead of travelling out of the area or getting home shopping delivered. It is not designed as a retail park to attract shoppers from further afield. The existing service access was widened so service vehicles can enter, deliver and leave the area as a dedicated one-way route at the rear through the secure gated area, which is totally separate to the customer vehicular access and the pedestrianised area to the front of the shops. The business operators are not yet known. The vehicle size is quoted are illustrated on a worst case scenario. However, a small scale development such as this does not receive daily HGV deliveries, perhaps on two or three occasions a week, and the smaller units use van type delivery vehicles. This development will complement and enhance the use of Kings Falls Centre as a whole, instead of driving people away to further destinations. The building will be built to energy efficient standards as per planning conditions and the design will allow the end user to incorporate energy saving measures such as solar panels amongst others. The scheme also provides for electric vehicle charging points and there is two disabled spots uh, as Keith Martin uh, pointed out there was only one. The existing bus stop will be upgraded and made DDA compliant. The ventilation design will be more efficient and quieter than the existing. The application has complied with policy requirements and gained approval from all of the council's professional consultees including highways and environmental health. A recommendation to approve from the planning officer and all the conditions proposed have also been accepted. Mr Chandrani, you've, you've had your four minutes if you'd like to tie up now please. Yeah, 30 seconds. In the current economic conditions this development would provide a much needed boost to the area enhancing local facilities and creating jobs making Penwitham a better place. Thank you all for listening. Okay thanks very much for your presentation. Uh, we will now open up to committee councillor Yates. Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know I know this area quite well. Um, we have in the past. Just wait, while he's there. Yeah, I'm not willing to set a precedent. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's been nothing at all wrong with the IT system 
the council in the last month. Anybody who's emailed me, I have received emails. I have, e I have received emails from Democratic Services and they have received d emails from me. And it's a little bit late in the day now, members of the public rocking up saying your IT systems aren't working. Um, I'll allow it this once. Right, I'll tell you what to do. Come to the desk, introduce yourself, and make your objections. You've got four minutes, okay. But this will not happen again. There is absolutely nothing wrong with our IT systems. Nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. The, applica the applicant has to agree to it, and he hasn't agreed. You need to ask him. I'm sorry, it's just a rule that we have to abide by. You can't just hand photographs out without. The photographs that were shown were, they weren't fully indicative of the state of the area, the parking and such like. And I'll try and, and briefly get through some of this that I've written. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm here tonight because I live directly across from this development on Port Lane. In fact, you could see my house on the aerial view earlier on. Um, I'm greatly concerned about the development uh, and as such, my family and I will have to live with the consequences of any of your decisions tonight for a very, very long time. And it really, really does concern me. Um, I don't have long. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into the detail that I had prepared. I'll let you carry on with your meeting. Uh, essentially, I want to talk about the size of the building and the shape of the building. Um, it's quite a. Although they say they've reduced it, I still consider it quite a greedy size building. Um, it's going to be quite imposing in the area. Um, there is a policy in place, I believe, though I don't know the number of it, about buildings in the area fitting in blending in, being appropriate to the area. This is a bonny looking building if it was being built on an industrial estate or an out of town retail park. However, this area is primarily good old fashioned red Accrington brick and sloped slate roofs. It'll stand out like a sore thumb. In fact, if it was Blackpool Tower, it wouldn't stand out much more, to be honest. The size of it leads me on to the other issue with it, which has been covered and mentioned. Uh, Chris Sowerby and, and several other people are very aware of it. Uh, the amount of car parking spaces, it, it's all building and no car park in the development. And the parking it, it is a, it's, it's hard for me to stress enough of the, the, the parking issues in the area that are already there. Now, although you're not allowed to look at this, I'll describe it to you. It's a photograph of the champagne that I took today late morning and there are 14 cars on that car park and they're using the existing shops obviously the developer doesn't want cars like that to be on it i get that um where are they going to park probably outside my house i certainly don't want that well, the car parking you're all well i'm not going on you i realize you're in a rush um I'll leave it at that. The HGV access is another huge concern. These vehicles will be stopped right outside my property in order to make the right turn into Woodville. And I'm also a class one HGV driver, hold of a, a CE license. And if I was presented with that turn, knowing the amount of traffic that was there, it certainly wouldn't be a turn I would like. It's extremely difficult. The potential for damage to infrastructure, posts, signs, curbs, other vehicles, etc., is very high to put it mildly uh, the turn the swept path analysis has been very very neatly adapted to show that the cars that are parked there aren't in positions where they are normally parked if if that makes sense to you 
It's obviously there are parked vehicles shown on it, but they're clearly positioned to show a lorry can make that turn. It would be nigh on impossible. And if you made the turn into Woodville and then approach these vehicles, you would then you probably couldn't make the turn at all. You were then represented in a, a very, very difficult position with a large HGV. You certainly couldn't reverse it. That That's an absolute no-no. Um, making the turn would be impossible. You're then stuck with the situation of, well, where do I go now? You've got to come back around and approach again, hoping the way is clear. And you're then trundling off into Kingsfold Housing Estate. There is no other way out. And that is really... Well, I'm sure you could be aware, unacceptable. This is a narrow 20 mile an hour limit, parked cars, HGV, particularly articulated lorries driving down there is really, really not appropriate. If they're to be allowed at all, and I would personally like to see no deliveries of that scale, there needs to be an absolute limit on, on seven and a half ton vehicles, preferably a lot smaller. I mean, these things will be shaking my house to pieces. They really will. Okay, Chris, that's your, your four minutes. Yeah. Well, okay. thank you. Right, Considering thank the you situation, for thanks very much for letting me speak. Okay. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Um, Councillor Yates. Right. Thank you, Chair. No, it's okay if I can understand what we're going on there. Um, I have been up to have a look at this area. I do, I do know the area. Um, we have been, I was looking at the representation, there's 25 in, in a, for approval, well, op, in a, opposition to it, 16 in support and two offerings, so there's not much either way to, to look at that. Now, the area in the past has been plagued with uh, antisocial behaviour, um, on and on and on, but that, as we keep saying, is a police issue. It's not an issue for us as a planning committee. Um, the parking issues, I've listened to them before for, for around this area, but that really is not for an issue for us. That's the Lancashire County Council for that area should be going to LCC highways um, and that's telling them to get the parking uh, restrictions enforced round that side because they actually enforce yellow lines not the police so there's a lot of things that we don't know about and then there's the seven and a half ton that this gentleman's well that is up to the, the county council should be taking that forward for the area now when i when i look at it at the what lcc have put in for the highways it's one of the biggest reports I've seen from LCC Highways. I was really amazed when I read it. It's in detail, everything through, spot on. It gives all the conditions and everything. That's what we like to see in a report. I look at it all together and the buildings, if we, if we do go ahead with this, I'm of the opinion that it will clean up the area if we put the conditions of the highways in, it'll help the area as well. It'll make sure the parking's done properly. And that uh, if the if the county council for that area does it does his or her job, I don't know who it is, uh, she'll be able to see to the restrictions. Um, I think it'll get rid of some of the antisocial behaviour from around there. The application is is an excellent application. Everything's been noted and put down in this in this uh, report. It's policy compliant. So on that, I'm going to move for approval, Chair, and uh, hope for the residents that things will improve once this new development is in place. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor Yates. Um, Chris, just tell me how many consultations did we have with LCC Highways, please? We had um, the initial consultee response. Uh, sorry, we had the initial consultee response. We then had a further two responses following the submission of amended plans. And then in addition to that, when some very technical letters of objection came from the public in regards to how the public felt that the access arrangement wouldn't work for HGVs. They were forwarded to County Highways for them to review 
and they reviewed them and they came back again and they said our position is not altered. So they have responded, I'd suggest, three times in response to the plans before them and another two times in regards to letters that were sent from members of the public which were forwarded to them in their entirety for them to look at. Uh, they've also visited the site on a number of occasions, um, which is what they've said in their response. So it's pretty in depth then, really, for them. It, it is in depth. Yeah. 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 Okay, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think always this, with these things in every application, I think the, the most important thing is when we hear from residents who live there. Um, I think in this application, uh, I'm also fortunate enough to be one of the ward councillors uh, and someone who frequents that area. Uh, on a weekly basis, visiting the local pub, pub, uh, public house and also um, the best chip shop in South Rural. Um, I do agree with 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 Jane and Chris. Um, this, I have concerns with this, and, and it, the application as a whole, I think, is a positive one. Um, the site definitely needs uh, redevelopment. I don't think anyone can argue differently. Um, my concerns are on, are on the impact of, of HGVs um, on the residential road of Woodville Road. Um, I understand the amended sweat, um, sweat path analysis um, has been done, but I've, I've real concerns about not only about the safety, but also the air quality impact. Um, that road is a very busy road. It's also a very busy residential area. And I think the concerns raised are very valid. Um, for me, having looked at the report and looked at what LCC have said, it, I don't find much assurance there um, that those have been listened to well enough and we've come up with, sorry not we, or certainly they haven't come up with um, an appropriate uh, position in terms of looking at the safety um, of, of the residents. So. I say I'm not against the application as a whole, but I think there are there are certainly concerns there for me, where I think there needs to be more work done. Um, I will leave it at that for now. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Mrs. Mary Green. Thank you, Chair. It's more of a query, really, to the officers. Um, in the conditions there on page forty-six. Um, condition 14 and 17, I'm just a bit concerned about really. Um, condition 14, it's on about the times of deliveries to the site. And it says um, they shouldn't occur outside the hours of 7 and 1900 hours, Monday to Saturday, and 9 to 1900 hours, Sundays and nationally recognised bank holidays. I find it strange, usually there's no deliveries on Sunday. I'm just wondering why these deliveries are being allowed on the conditions for a Sunday um, till seven o'clock at night. Um, and also on condition 17, it's on about the extractor system on unit four, may only operate within the hours of seven and 11, uh, seven o'clock in the morning. I don't know how much noise there is involved in that extractor system, but seven o'clock in the morning is quite early if it's noisy. Um, I just wondered if you could just look at these conditions and perhaps tighten them up, especially about the Sunday delivery, really. Does it necessarily have to be having deliveries on a Sunday? For sake of the amenity of the residents, I'm thinking. Thank you. Okay, Chris, um, well, on number 17, surely, you don't need an extractor system on at seven in the morning in a hot food takeaway unless he's doing breakfast, surely. So I could, I'd like you to get that amended, but can you take over with the Sunday deliveries, please? Yes, no problem. I mean, the, the, the Sunday deliveries, it's um, in relation to the nature of the units, particularly the convenience store. Um, convenience stores like this will get bread and milk deliveries every day of the week. Um, it's, it's, it's not like, um, you know, like a computer shop or something like that, where you'd, just, you'd have a, a product that doesn't perish. Uh, you, for convenience stores like this, you'd need to have that flexibility to have your milk, your bread deliveries, your yogurt deliveries, um, as and when they're available, which is on a daily basis. Is it necessary that they're delivered on a Sunday though? I mean, surely if they're delivered on a Saturday, they're in fridges and things, surely they'd be still fine on a Sunday morning for people to buy or 
during the day. I'm just wondering whether these conditions could just be tightened up a little bit just to help the residents as well with lorries and things coming in and out on a Sunday. Yeah, go on, Chris, go on. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it's, it's a question for the applicant, really. I mean, they will know how the, the businesses might work. Um, in regards to the HGVs, um, I, I think, as the applicant had said, they only expect them to come two or three times a week. So it's, it's, it's not a daily occurrence that HGVs would, would come to the site. But um, I suppose it's, it's over to the applicant if he's still over there and available to um, the amend of that condition. Uh, would, would suit him. All right, Chris, thanks. Is the applicant still with us, Charlotte? Uh, Mr. Chandarana, are you still there? Hi. Hello, Chair. Yeah, did, did you hear um, Councillor Mrs. Green's concerns regarding uh, the conditions? I did, yes. Um, so just to answer that, as kind of Chris said, um, that some deliveries may appear on a Sunday, but very, very unlikely HGV, and it's something that could be looked at altering. We, the, the issue was we don't know the end particular traders that are going to be in this unit. For example, the hot food takeaway and the, the condition there again, it's the, the parameters are being set on a worst case scenario basis. The vehicle size could be smaller on the HGVs, the, the takeaway, again, it's not going to open from 7 to 11. It it's could end up being from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. or it could be something like you said, a morning outlet, which is from 7 a.m. and finishes at 2. We just don't know. And therefore, it is on a worst case scenario basis, which we will work with the retailer to improve on. OK, thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Mr. Chandarana. Council Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> See, this development, it, it, it's a good development for an area which needs it. That's the first thing. But the Ward Council has recently walked around that area, and the biggest blight you have around here, apart from the stuff which happens after hours, is, as Councillor Martin's pointed out, and Chris, is the, is the traffic. And we can't get away from it. So I think what we've got here is a very receptive applicant in a test. You spoke well. We've got Jane and Chris who spoke again in terms of their concerns because they've got to live there. We make the decisions, but they've got to live there. Hitesh is looking to invest. And we had Jane also from the community in support. So we've got to find a fine balance here. This looks to me like one of those applications, which is it's very nearly there. <clears throat> but we can't ignore the, 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 least, the, the weakest point of it. And the weakest point of it is there's concerns over safety of HGVs. Which, for the life of me, I can't understand. As Barry said, Lancashire County Highways will give a comprehensive response. The area, it, it's it's not required of HGVs. Chris mentioned restricting it to a certain size, and I know it's an LCC thing, but that would be a sensible thing to do. So, it, it appears to me like there's a bit of work to be done between the applicant and the residents, because there are some residents in support as well. And the sort of small details, which I think our, our position is to make a judgment and try and enhance the applicant and get the investment right, but also get the residents happy too. Just one query, when I seen that the South Ribble parking standards are for 50 spaces, but we are only getting 20 here, that does raise concern and that's where I think we could do a bit more work together. Um, so, as you said to me in the past year, it's up to, to me. I make my decision on this. So I would move the firm on the basis that the two parties got together, thrashed it out and and improved the the, 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 the applicant's um, application. So everyone's happy when it comes to it because we've had COVID. We're welcoming an investment. It actually wants to invest. It will be good for the community as well, but we just need to nail that weak point, which is the, the, the traffic and the, the fears which the residents have got. So I would move the ferment, if that's okay, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor Fl Flannery. Uh, never, ever apologise to me for your dedication. Thank okay. you, Chair. Councillor Moon. 
Thanks, Joe. It's a really quick question, whether we can condition, I don't know if we can, but whether we can either condition or if we can't condition, I am very supportive of Councillor Flannery's idea that we can try and negotiate, defer, and then the applicant can look at this around those HGVs. Because I know we've had similar situations where we've put commercial into areas where having those big vehicles would impact, significantly impact the community. And smaller vehicles have been used, but whether that's been because applicants have agreed with that or whether we can condition something like that i just want to know from our officers can can we say yes but you've got to use something smaller than a hgv i think at the moment we can't do anything because we don't know who's going to be in there do we well with respect chair i'll come back on that and say we're putting conditions in to um that would steer that it's not about well we don't know who's in there so hey ho you could say well we don't know who's going to want it and if aldi want it we'll just knock through the internal walls and, and we'll change the configuration. I think what we're trying to say as a committee is we're trying to find a solution where we can support development but that doesn't have a significant or as significant an impact on the community. Yeah, I mean, once again, our problem is LCC highways. Um, I don't think we can condition them. I think Stephen wants to come in. Yeah, Chair, I think my preference would be deferral in those circumstances because given that we don't know the end users, I think we need to have discussions with the applicant as to the likely end users and test out what sort of vehicles they would like to use and what times of day. And then that would obviously give the opportunity to then reconsult the local residents who have expressed the concerns very well tonight. So I think deferral would be a preference rather than the condition that might not necessarily work for anybody. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Smith, then Councillor Adams, then Councillor Yates, and then I think we'll draw this debate to a conclusion. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. I think, uh, I mean, I know the site very well. I live not too far away from it, so uh, and, uh, regularly drive down there. Uh, and there's no doubt the traffic is very, very busy. It's a very, very busy area. Um, not least the double-decker buses that go down there so it's on a bus route which is really really busy but nevertheless i mean i would welcome the uh, the business coming to the area welcome the shops which i would i think will enhance the shopping area it will enhance the other businesses uh, it will employ people um and to be quite honest we, you don't often look a gift horse in the mouth with regard to increasing business activity in the area uh, i think it will make a huge difference to the area it will might make it busier um, uh, but in this, that sense, it will make the other shops busier and make them more viable at the same time. Um, we've alluded to the uh, the champagne and, and, and the pub that was before there. Uh, some of the stories around that from a licensing point of view were absolutely horrendous. Um, and there's still a lot of activity there now. The place does look a mess. It needs to improve. Um, and I, I'm, I have to say, I think I'm going to vote for it. But the deliveries on a Sunday is a breaker for me, I think, to be quite honest. I think, you know, people don't want deliveries on a Sunday. And um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, the applicant doesn't know who's going in there. But when he advertises it, when he get, if he gets planning permission, when he advertises it, <laughs> he will be discussing with the, the the people that are coming in there and say, look, you can't have deliveries on a Sunday. And their business profile has actually got to fit in with the planning permissions that it's got. So I don't see that as a massive problem at all. I really don't. Um, but deliveries on a Sunday, and I think uh, this committee can can take that out and, and just say no deliveries on a Sunday at all. Um, I don't see there's any reason. His business profile has then got to fit in with the planning application. So I think, uh, I think on that, um, it's already been proposed that uh, approval, um, but I think approval with them um, for, for me would be with no deliveries on a Sunday. OK, thanks, Councillor Smith. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think um, a sensible way forward. I don't disagree with Councillor Smith's comments and I do obviously welcome um, investments into the area. And I think it's, it, you know, on the whole is a, is a good application um, there are just a few areas for me which are concerning um, and when it comes to the safety um, and the impact on residents I think there is a deal to be struck and I think for me uh, you know a sensible way forward would be to be to defer this to allow the applicants um, to possibly change um, 
some of the application uh, to, to meet those or to mitigate the concerns raised. Um, so I will second defer. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Yates. Right, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, w I was just wondering when we're going through, because I, I understand the deferral point, and I do agree that it's, we're so close to getting this passed. Will it not be uh, easier, instead of deferring, to leave it to the Chair and Vice-Chair and the uh, Director of Planning to look at, to talk to the applicant and come up with that decision and, and move through instead of, you know, officer time again and again and then fetching it back here. If that is possible, then I would hope that the could, could be taken off the table. But if it isn't possible, I'm prepared to go with the deferral. So I'm over to the offices to tell me which they think is the best way forward. Can it be done with the Chair, Vice Chair and Director of Planning? Well, just before you come in, Stephen, I, I, I personally, as the Chair, would prefer to go to deferment so that the applicant can discuss with the residents the best way forward. However, if, you, if you're not happy with that, Councillor Yates, we can go with your proposal for approval with a second. Yes, so yeah, certainly. I, I, I didn't say that to you. You're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say that, that I wasn't happy with it. What I was saying is it could be an easier way forward because we're so very close to approving this application that if you and the and your deputy and the director of planning talk to the to the applicant because what he said there, he was open minded about Sunday hours and his vehicles. I think you knew enough there, you know. Uh, that's all I'm saying. I, I didn't want you to come back and, and swear the officers into a. I know you, you've got experienced officers there, so they won't be swayed by me or anybody else. But I just like their opinion. Okay, Stephen, if you'd like to come in, then I've got Councillor Mullineau. And yep. Councillor Hancock. So, Stephen first, Councillor Mullineau, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Yates. The only thing I would say is, usually when we uh, give delegated authority to chair and to the director, it's where there is no further changes required that would need consultation. It might be just agreeing the, you know, the, the amount of money in 106 or what have you. It doesn't usually involve physical changes to a scheme which this deferral might need. So. What would worry me would be then there wouldn't be the opportunity for consultation with the neighbours about the details of the further scheme. Whereas if we deferred it and then there was the amended scheme, that would then involve the the, the wider community, which I think is only fair. Uh, Councillor Mullineau. Thank you, Chair. I think you, you already mentioned about LCC obviously being the authority. Um, not South Ribble um, as far as the heavy goods and other things going in there. But we are putting um, some some regulations as far as we're concerned to try and alleviate that. I just wonder, would it be possible not to talk about heavy goods? Uh, I think um, the applicant before mentioned about it, smaller vehicles, this, that and the other. I just wondered if there's something that we could put in there that would prevent the heavy goods coming in there, which and I know some of the residents were talking, that seemed to be the main concern about the heavy goods coming around, whether they can turn in that circle or whatever. Uh, so I'm just asking, would it be possible to change something on those uh, conditions where, where we could do away with the heavy goods coming into that uh, area? Uh, Chris, would you like to respond to that? Well, I can see that the uh, applicant's got his hand up, so I'd be interested just to hear what, what his views are. Yeah, well, I'll, it's Councillor Hancock first, OK? Councillor Hancock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think we all agree that this site needs redeveloping, but whatever you put on there, you will have the same traffic problems that we've got now. Um, so uh, I, I personally think we should uh, defer so that we can have discussions with the applicant to try and solve some of the problems that, that have been brought up. 
Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Councillor Hancock. Uh, Mr Chandanari, you've got your hand up. If you'd like to come back in one last time, and I'm closing the debate down after that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just in regard to HEVs, as we've already previously said, we don't know the number, but that's on the worst case scenario. We could possibly talk to end retailers with a smaller vehicle slightly. Um, again, this is for maybe the weekly delivery as opposed to the, the daily deliveries would normally be on smaller vehicles anyway. Uh, but please bear in mind that, you know, the existing restaurant used to get uh, beer barrel deliveries, uh, food deliveries in. The chip shop on the corner does get wagon deliveries in and refuse vehicles also, you know, service that street and used to service the champagne site with commercial bins as well. Um, so we ideally, yes, we are open to conditions and, you know, reducing the activity. And we just needed to set out the parameters because of the way it was. Uh, to, to sum up on that, we really could do with not delaying this any further. We have hit, been hit by COVID, obviously, and further to that, this application was delayed uh, due to bat surveys uh, being out of season and therefore we lost a number of months with that. And we did aim to consult with the councillors of Middleforth Ward from the outset of this. Sorry, uh, thank you. I'll leave it to that. OK, thanks, Mr Chandanoa. Right, um, that's the debate closed. I'll just ask one question. Is anyone against deferring this application? Councillor Smith. I'm uh, for approval, Chair. Um, I, I can't see anything in there that a consultation with the applicant will solve. The, the problems are a highway problem that the highways don't think it's a problem. The parking spaces are substantial at 20 parking spaces. Um, and I would welcome the business. And uh, I just heard um, the applicant um, saying it's been delayed enough. I think it probably has been delayed enough with the, with the COVID thing. Um, and it's a big decision that he's making here, a big investment into into the area. And um, well, for me, I'm, I'm, I, I would they go for approval, um, but um, the deliveries on a Sunday uh, for me, um, I would uh, alter that, um, alter that uh, uh, number fourteen uh, for no deliveries on a Sunday, and that's that was what I would approve with no deliveries on a Sunday. Okay, thanks, Councillor Smith. So, Councillor Smith is we've already had um, a proposal for deferment; it's been seconded, and um, Councillor Smith has moved an amendment for approval with the condition no deliveries on Sunday. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Mullineau. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, I asked before about whether uh, we we could do away with the heavy goods. I didn't really get an answer on that, I don't think. Um, but if, if, as I say, if the applicant was um, uh, amiable and was able to say that, um, I think, as I've said before, a lot of the residents will be a lot happier than they are at the moment. Um, but, but if I could get that uh, uh, agreed, I'd be willing to second Council Smith's uh, for approval because I think that's that's is the stopping the main stopping area for me is the the heavy goods. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Miss uh, Councillor Molyneux. I'm I'm pretty sure that HGVs are allowed to use Port Lane and Cop Lane, um, unless Chris can tell me otherwise. Do LCC have any kind of bylaws that say they can't use them? I'm not aware of any weight restrictions. OK, uh, thanks, 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 Chris. Um, it's just the simple fact of the matter is the applicant's told us he doesn't know who's going to be going into that those three units, so we don't know what kind of vehicles will be used in them. Councillor Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a B road, Chair. So it, it's heavy goods vehicles. Can, there is no weight restriction on it. So, you know, and it's all been put in, in the highways report. Uh, the reason that I said I'll take uh, approval away is because the officers have said that with that clause, that when it comes back to us, it's just a matter of just ticking it. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Yates. So we've had a 
proposal for deferment, which has been seconded. Councillor Smith has proposed an amendment for approval with removing deliveries on a Sunday. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Smith's amendment? Councillor Watson. I'm willing to second that. OK, so we will vote on the amendment first. This is for approval with Sunday deliveries removed. Uh, Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Donoghue. Against, Chair. Councillor Flannery. Against. Councillor Mrs Mary Green. Um, I'm for deferment, actually, but... Yeah, so you're against the amendment? Yeah, but, okay. but still sticking with Councillor Smith about the Sunday deliveries and the extractor at 7 o'clock. Well, we'll, we'll do that when the, when, when yeah. the application comes back to us right, okay. next time. So you're for deferment? So you're against the amendment? Councillor Hancock? Against, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Lomax? Uh, against. Councillor Molyneux? For. Councillor Moon? Against. Councillor Shipples? I'm against. Sorry. Councillor Smith? For approval, Chair. Councillor Watson? For, Chair. Councillor Yates? And I'm against approval. Jodie, can you give us the scores on that one, please? Um, the motion to approve the planning application subject to a change of condition 14 um, has not been carried. And it's been 10 against and 3 for. OK, so let's go to the vote for deferment then, please. Uh, Councillor Adams? For. Councillor Donoghue? For, Chair. Councillor Flannery? For. Councillor Mrs Mary Green? For. Councillor Harry Hancock? For, Chair. Councillor Lomax? For, Chair. Councillor Mullineau? <coughs> Against. Councillor Moon? For. Councillor Sharples? For. Councillor Smith? For. Oh, right, OK. Uh, Councillor Watson? For. Councillor Yates? For. And I am also for deferral. Jody, will you confirm the outcome of the The application for the Champion Indian restaurant um, has been deferred with, bear with me. It was 11, yeah, 11 um, in favour and two against, um, and that has been deferred to address highways and deliveries concerns. Okay, Chris, so you, you'll be dealing with the application Moving on, won't you? Yeah, I'm not planning on going. It was. Do, do you want me not to? You don't know what we've got planned, though. <laughs> Just need you to indulge in further conversations with the applicant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're just going to have a two-minute comfort break. Okay.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your patience. We'll move on to agenda item number eight of this evening, and that's land off Shawbrook Road and Alt Kilane Leyland. Um, the vice chair said he was going to declare an interest because it's in his ward, but I, did, I, I told him he didn't need to because it's not non, non prejudicial. So that's that out of the way. Okay, Mal. Okay, Catherine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, planning permission was granted for outline approval for 400 dwellings at Leyland Lane, which is currently built out by uh, Red Row. Uh, the scheme met the requirements of the Council's affordable housing policy in that it provided 30% affordable provision, and that was made up of 20% of a starter home initiative and 10% as a commuted sum. As the starter home initiative did not materialise, the full back position in the legal agreement was the discounted open market product. And if any of those were then unsold after six months, the council receives a payment and the dwellings are sold on the open market. And it probably equates to about £1.7 million. This report seeks authority, delegated authority, to vary the current section 106 so that the council can receive that commuted sum earlier. And the reason for that is discounted open market units are difficult for first time buyers. It's difficult for, for them to get a mortgage in this current climate. And the table under 5.5 .5 of the report sets that out in greater detail. So basically the home buyer requires a larger mortgage deposit of 15% rather than 5% on the open market. They pay a higher monthly mortgage rate per month than buying on the open market. And the applicant is saying that anyone currently buying through this model of the discounted open market product is worse off than buying on the open market. This information has been since checked by the council's viability consultant who's confirmed that is the current situation. And on that basis, uh, officers are recommended a rec recommended that delegated authorities sought to continue to proceed with the section 106 to vary it as the officer report. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Catherine. I'm looking round at uh, the committee and there's some rather puzzled looking faces uh, sat round here as I was until you explained it to me. So can you just pretend we don't know anything about section 106 money and tell people what you're asking us to do with you? OK, thank you, Chair. Um, Section 106 is a legal agreement that ties the developer into certain things. In this case, it's tied into um, the affordable provision, and that's for 20% on site. When that legal agreement was first signed, the Conservative initiative was for starter homes, and this was seen partly as the flagship site technically because it would have been one of the first within the country to have the starter homes and that starter home initiative was about encouraging first-time buyers on the open market and making it a lot easier for them that initiative never took off it never got through the statute books at central government so starter homes never happened on the site now our legal team are really good and in that section 106 they set out well if the starter homes don't work then we want a fallback position. That fallback position is your discounted open market value. So a first time buyer can go and buy a product that's 80% less than the open market. And what the applicant's saying is, because of the change currently in the mortgage arrangements, first time buyers can't get a mortgage for a discounted open market product. In fact, they're actually penalised, they're worse off. So we're trying to help them through our affordable provision, giving 20% on site. But actually, if you go as a first time buyer, you discount an open market product now, because it's like four or five years since it was first signed, is very difficult. So much so that in the long run, if you go in to buy a product, you won't even go for your discounted open market. You go for your open market, you know, just go and buy one like off the shelf in a way, because you're, your deposits are a lot lower and your actual monthly repayments are lower as shown on that table in 5.5 .5. that table sets out those differences so what the applicant is saying 
I can I can advertise these for six months, like the Section 106 says. I can advertise them as discounted open market value and you'll get a payment at the end. But actually, we feel guilty in a way. That was the phrase that was put to us because we know that actually it's better all round for them to go on the open market if they can afford it. So those are the choices under this particular site. Now, that doesn't happen on any of the other sites in the borough because the start homes never took off. So we haven't got Section 106 agreements like that. So instead of waiting six months, going through the market sales, getting them advertised, trying to flog a product that they're saying doesn't actually work, and which we've sent checks with our own viability assessor, who is incredibly um, skilled ensuring that the developers don't get away with things. And they're absolutely clear that, yes, the figures stack up. It's going to be difficult for the discounted open market product uh, to, to be available. So ultimately, the applicants come and said, well, instead of waiting six months, we'll give you the money now. And at the moment, it equates to about 1.7 million. So we don't provide any affordable houses on site. You get your 1.7 million for that 20% plus the 10% fee that we've already going to get, which probably equates to just short of a million or around a million. So then that, that money's there for the council to potentially invest with their aspirational build. Does that help? Thank you very, very much, yes. Yeah, well, it, it was just so much better. Okay, thanks, Catherine. Um, Right, I don't have any registered speakers. I don't have um, any um, councillors not on committee wishing to speak. I do have um, Edward Ramsden from Red Row, who is in attendance, but he's only here to answer technical questions. He doesn't want to um, address the committee. So, Councillor Moon. Thanks, Jenny. Um, for me, I'm reading this report and backed up by what Catherine just told us. It's an absolute no-brainer for me, this. I think... We should go with this. I'm happy to move approval as per the officer recommendation. I think the only thing which we can't designate as a planning committee, but I can say sat here in planning committee and I can lobby the uh, current administration is that when this was put in, it was put in for starter homes, for first time buyers, for people to get on the property market. And if we have this commuted sum, I would like to hope this council will choose to use it for what it was intended and will put it into a scheme that either supports deposits for first time buyers or homes for first time buyers, but keeps it in that niche that it was originally created for, rather than taking that money and using it for an, another type of affordable home because I think we have to ensure that we provide affordable homes across the borough in, in, in every mechanism, you know, for what our younger people want to have and for some people that's home ownership. So I know we can't designate that chair, but I just wanted to say it. <laughs> Thank you. So that was a, pro a proposal for approval. And I agree with what you're saying, by the way. Uh, Councillor Flannery. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. <clears throat> so over the life of a mortgage, on comparisons with the Help to Buy scheme, they'll be paying £21,000 less, Catherine. Is that right? Because I'm just looking, I'm just wondering, why, did, why is the interest rate different at all? On the, well, it might be a, a question for from Red Row. One's shown 2.75, one's 1.59. Okay, um, um, that, that's, a, that's a good question and a good point, really. I think the more that rate is different because it's a discounted open market product and it's because the mortgage lenders are insisting that it's that rate. That's the information that we've been given. Does that answer your question, Council Flannery? It does, yeah. That the poor people are being fleeced by the banks again. <laughs> Councillor Yates. Uh, I thought it were announced today, uh, well, maybe not today, maybe yesterday, I've been busy. There's 5% now for, for mortgages. And that came out this week. It was in the conference, I think. I've been that busy, I haven't seen anything to that. But I have heard that that's come out, this 5% mortgage rate. Um, is it all... I'm looking at the, the need for affordable housing. We always say there is a need for affordable housing. So what are we saying? There's no need for affordable housing in this area, you know, um, because I'm sure there is, and the 5% rate would be a lot a lot less. 
I would like to see if we do go for it, like Councillor Moon said, that the money is allocated so that it can be spent on affordable housing in other areas across South River, not spent on Warden Park or somewhere like that. Uh, the, the 106 money is intended for affordable houses and it goes for affordable houses, not for other developments or or ventures that uh, that might pop up. So that um, just if I can get some uh, feedback on that, that it is allocated, it is just for that, and it's not going to be spent on anything else, then I'd go for it. Yeah, it sounds like a discussion um, Councillor Evans and I had on Tuesday evening. This, uh, Catherine, would you like to? Um, Okay, um, thanks Councillor Yates. I can't comment on the 5% uh, rate that you've just quoted um, and I don't know if, that, if that's for first time buyers or if that's also for this product. The information that we've been given is that this product at this current moment is very difficult um, for home buyers to, to, to buy into basically, which is why um, the proposals come forward. And yes, the monies are there affordable housing is needed. Our policy is 30% on, on all our large sites once it hits that trigger. Um, so of course, as officers, we, we consistently push for that and fight the viability um, consultants on that specific issue. So yes, um, the money is there and it's there for the affordable housing and that money would then be collated by the council to be used for that aspiration. <coughs> I don't think you can be any clearer, can you, Catherine? Yeah. Yes, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to say that um, I'd whole, wholeheartedly agree in terms of that money being spent on affordable housing. Um, I think we need to look at the record of the current administration and look at the fact that we actually started building affordable housing. Um, so I think as a committee, we would like to see that further um, and as someone um, who would support that. So um, I would also second Councillor Moon's proposal of approval because um, I think it is something, unfortunately, it's, I feel as though we're backed into a corner um, and I won't get political, Chair, about the government's, but uh, it's a failure uh, on their behalf and I think it's something that we need to act upon. If we can do something as a local authority to help first-time buyers in South River, it's something we need to do and take on. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Lomax. Uh, I was going to uh, second it uh, myself. Um, the consultants we use are very sharp uh, cookies. Uh, I did attend the training the other evening and they are certainly working in our best interests. So, you know, I, I would go for this. Councillor Watson, then Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got to be honest, when I read this report initially, I had completely misunderstood it. Um, I took quite a different lesson from it and I was coming here thinking that there's a very good chance I'd be saying absolutely no way to this. Um, but yeah, thank you for your explanation because suddenly it all makes a bit more sense and I feel a little bit daft. Um, so my understanding is in particular, I, I know the details haven't come out about, uh, about what uh, Councillor Yates mentioned with the 5% um, announcement on uh, Wednesday. However, because this is a different scheme, my understanding of the bit that I did hear is that this wouldn't apply to that anyway, would it? Is, am I right in saying that? Um, I, I don't know for sure, because like you, I don't know the details and whether or not it's been through through the legislation, but this is a particular historical issue on this particular site. Yeah, that's uh, that's more or less my understanding of it as well. There's no way of knowing because until the detail comes out, we can't say it, but I, I very, very much doubt it will apply to that. However, beforehand, that was one of my thoughts was, well, I'm only going to be able to get it through that route. Why, why on earth are we doing this? So, yeah, I... I Having now actually understood it, <laughs> and, uh, I can only apologise and in, in reverse for my thoughts ahead of time. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a darn sight more clearer now that you've uh, you've said it out loud for me. Thank you very much. Cheers, Councillor Watson. Once again, there's no need to apologise because I was going to vote against it until until I asked Catherine to explain it to me, like. I was a 16 year old kid just leaving school, which she did, and it all made perfect sense. 
Council Smith. Um, yes, I was going to vote it against it as well, and I might still might still do, but um, there we are. Um, are these houses actually built yet? Which is one question. Um, if you could answer that. Um, I don't know for sure if they've been built. There's a, a, a Edward might, might be able to com, uh, confirm that. Um, when I was on site, I don't think they've got as far up there as those aspects. Um, but you'd have to ask Edward for clarification. I don't want to lie to you, councillor. OK, well, can I ask another question then? Um, in the sense, will the, in these 20% uh, uh, what were discount market or affordable houses, um, that would make the total houses on there, that would make 40 houses, right? OK, are any of those houses going to be affordable, built as affordable houses on that site? Or is, it, is there no more affordable houses on that site apart from? Okay, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and answer what I think you're asking. Those properties that are affordable um, equate to about forty mm. um, within the figures as set out on on the plan that you'll be able to see, and they're identified with mm. the blue. Uh, there's a mix. There's two bed apartments. There's eight of those. There's two bed dwelling houses. There's about twenty eight of those, and there's three bed. Uh, there's eleven of those. I did ask. Uh, Edward that specific question were those going to be built like that and he confirmed that they were as far as he was aware that no uh, plans to change that so they would then be built like that and then be on the open market for somebody to get a mortgage so that, that in some ways the size of those units <coughs> would then dictate the price and because they are of that kind of um, tenure that they came that they were that they got the consent for that in itself makes them affordable. They're not the four bed detached with conservatories attached to them. Okay, yeah, thank you. I, un I understand that bit. Now, on the basis of that, this um, 1.7 million pounds that will be coming to us, could we use that to assist buyers to buy and get into the affordable houses on, on that particular scheme? Help with deposits and things, am I got this wrong or? You're looking as confused as I'm looking, I think. But, no, I, um, I, I presume Catherine's looking like that because she's not a financial advisor, is, no, is that no. correct? <laughs> um, I don't think it's... Is it for the planning authority to dish out loans? I, I think to, to answer your question, Councillor Smith, um, what I understand will happen is those houses will be available on the open market for people to go and buy and the whole essence of the report is that for a person to go and buy a two bed flat instead of getting a discounted open market two bed flat and having to en end up paying more the open market enables that two bed flat them to go and get an open market mortgage does that help a little yeah if i could just ask um edward ramsden from red Road. Is it built, this site now? Is it complete? OK, thanks for that. Um, anyone else on committee? Anyone? No, nope. about the proposal for approval, yes. Have I got a seconder? You did? Yes. I'm sorry, it's been going on so long, I forgot. <laughs> no other proposals? If there are no other proposals, Jordi, can we take this as a block vote? Or do you want me to do a, a roll call? Are we all happy to do it as a block vote for approval? Yeah, yeah, OK. Thanks, Jodie. The, um, the officer recommendation that delegated authority to vary the Section 106 agreement to provide for a commuted sum in lieu of 20% of on-site affordable housing dwellings has been unanimously approved.
Right, okay. Um, item agenda number nine, which is Kingsmead Stables B Lane Penwitham. I've got another typo because it says Linda on here. Uh, Catherine, um, you're intimating that you're presenting. Yes, yeah, th thank you, Chair. Uh, Linda's the case officer, and just because I'm sat here having dealt with the other one, it just seemed appropriate that I just carry on, really. So, um, development is a retrospective application for the siting of three number containers used for stabling facilities, a timber stable block and the storage of a touring caravan. Uh, the application has been brought to committee as the agent is related to one of the councillors. The site's located off B Lane in Penwitham, um, which you can see on the slide. Um, and is designated as part of the Pickering Farm major site for development under the local plan. The site split up into two parcels of land. Um, we've got the three storage containers uh, on this aspect here. We've got the um, timber stables adjacent to Balshaw Croft, and there's also an element of Harris fencing that seem to kind of like stop or restrict horses jumping out of a sand paddock. Uh, into um, B Lane. The timber stable block has been erected on land located to the west of Balsha Croft and has been replaced a much larger structure that was not structurally sound. This stable provides a holding stable to ensure that horses are free from illness and disease before being moved in closer proximity to the other st uh, stables and the other horses. And this is just to kind of give you a flavour of the containers. It accommodates three stables and the smallest one, two stables, <coughs> uh, and one's used as a tack room. A touring caravan is mainly sited to the south of the containers when it's not in use and is taken off site when the applicant attends equestrian events. This just gives you a picture of the Harris fencing that sits adjacent to the um, uh, grass verge near B Lane. And then this demonstrates the vehicle um, touring caravan and also this area here is actually in the ownership of the applicant. We've received um, a couple of letters of objection to the proposal and as officers we do have some sympathy with those objections. Um, the comments have been raised and have been discussed with the applicant uh, to look for a more permanent solution as in purpose built stables um, but due to the pending planning application for Pickering's Farm a temporary permission is recommended as the applicant doesn't want to invest any more in the site until the outcome of that application. Um, so the application is recommended for approval with a temporary condition as per the officer report. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Catherine. Another one that comes before us is related to a committee member. I would hate to have Councillor Hesketh's Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't he related to? Right, OK, we have no registered speakers. The ward members aren't present. They haven't dialled in. Uh, the applicant agent not here. So I will come immediately into committee. Councillor Yates and then Councillor Adams. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, it is it is down for development this site and it is a short term. But I've got one little problem is that if you cast, if we cast our minds back to last year, there was another site that wanted containers for livestock. Um, when we checked out, metal containers are not supposed to be used for livestock. Um, if we do, if we go ahead with this, you know, we're we're going against what we said last time. I'm saying livestock because horses come into livestock, but the the container was in Longton and it was uh, it was for sheep. Uh, for when they were giving birth, so they weren't like lords into your stud ones, but it did it did state that uh, because they was the livestock should not be housed in a metal container. So I just thought I'd better raise that. Catherine, would you like to address that? Do you, does that mean no? Uh, sorry, sorry, chair. Uh, my uh, my colleague would like to address that. Yeah, we're talking about the, the plan and application on, on Marsh Lane. Uh, the committee did refuse it, but we actually lost that on appeal. So whereas the committee's decision and that of our um, agricultural advisors, that it wasn't suitable to house livestock in such containers, um, subject, well, when it got to the appeal, we lost it. So 
that they've that the higher authority has taken that view. <laughs> so, so we did lose the appeal, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, Council Adams, did you want to come in? Yeah, um, probably not to go after that, really. Um, no, I think it, it, for me it's um, fairly straightforward. I don't think it would have probably come to committee if, um, you know, again, one of Council Eskis, many, many members uh, uh, wasn't the applicant. So for me, I, I, would, I would approve it. I think it's a, a, a temporary measure. Um, I would like to, to give that area of Penwitham, um, you know, some, certainly some, promise uh, of, of, of something more permanent um, down the line and that's obviously something that we'll discuss I'm sure in the future but for this I will I will approve um, the application thank you thanks Councillor Adams Councillor Moon thanks chair um, I have a lot of sympathy with them really I think what they're doing is really sensible if you had an equestrian yard you're not going to mix your horses why would you you're going to want to quarantine them in effect separately so I think it's you know, we've got people here who are practising in a, in a, to a high standard um, and they're a bit stuck, aren't they, on the Pickering's farm. So I think for us to do anything other than approve this would be really harsh. So uh, I'm happy to second that. Uh, thanks, Councillor Moon. Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's all right, Councillor Moon, more related to what I was going to do. I'm not sure Miss Red would be impressed by being in a metal container, but that's all right. Okay, do I have any other proposals? Okay, so we're going to move. No other proposals. Do we need a roll call or are we happy to have a block vote? Block vote, Jody, block vote, please. Members have unanimously approved the application for Kingsmead Stables uh, subject to conditions. OK, thanks very much, Jodie. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now there's no restrictions anymore. We can all leg it as fast as we can. <laughs> all right. Good night. Thanks very much for attending. See you next time.